Buddhism originated from the life and teaching of the historical Buddha Gautama, who probably lived in the 5th century BC. Even though his life has been embroidered with many myths and legends, behind them we could still detect the life story of a real historical person. He was born into a small republic in the Himalayan foothills in a region that now lies in southern Nepal. At the age of 16, he married, he lived in royal luxury, and at a certain point, his wife gave birth to a son. When he reached full maturity at the age of 29, he started to reflect on the problems of human existence, particularly the problem of suffering. And as part of an attempt to find a solution to this problem, he renounced the life of the palace and went forth as a wandering ascetic, seeking the way to enlightenment or awakening, the way to utterly resolve the problem of human suffering. He practiced the various types of meditation that were available in his time, but wasn't satisfied with them. <clears throat> Then he practiced extreme asceticism and self-mortification for six years until he carried these ascetic practices almost to the point of death. He concluded that the practice of asceticism would not lead to enlightenment, so then he began to take normal food again, regained his health, sat down at the bank of a river beneath a widespread tree, and resolve not to rise up until he had reached his goal. So that night he entered into deeper and deeper stages of meditation until by the time morning came, he was the enlightened one, Buddha, the one who is woken up from the delusion of ignorance. After spending several weeks in deep meditation, Beneath the Bodhi tree, he decided to go forth and to teach the truths that he had discovered. He called his teaching the Dharma, and he went from village to village, town to town, teaching and guiding others along the path to liberation. He attracted a large number of men and women who wanted to follow him into the homeless life, so in this way, he established the monastic sangha, the order of monks and nuns. He continued to teach for 45 years, from the age of 35 to the age of 80, until he passed away in the small Indian town of Kusinara. Okay, now we raise the question why the Buddha's teaching has been spreading so rapidly and attracting so much interest in the United States today. I mean, this is a teaching 2,500 years old. It might seem that we could assign it to the museums and the, ancient, the textbooks of ancient history, and yet we have scientists, economists, a few politicians, educated people, attracted to Buddhism, practicing Buddhism, even becoming Buddhist monks and nuns. So how do we understand this? To explain this, I would resort to two factors. One is the aim of the Buddha's teaching. The other is its methodology. As to the aim, the Buddha formulated his teaching in a way that directly addresses the critical problem at the heart of human existence. This is the problem of suffering in all of its range, from bodily suffering to the inevitability of death, to the problems of grief, worry, anxiety, anguish, and despair. And what the Buddha teaches is not only suffering, but also how to reach the end of suffering, how to find right in this present life the highest happiness and the most exalted peace. 
In order to clarify this, the Buddha compressed his full realization into a very convenient framework, which he calls the Four Noble Truths. So the first is the truth that life involves suffering. The second is the truth that the cause of suffering is craving, self-centered desire rooted in blind ignorance. The third truth declares that suffering can be ended with the attainment of wisdom and mental purification. And the fourth truth states that there is a practical way to reach the end of suffering, and that is the Noble Eightfold Path. As we can see from the Four Noble Truths, the Buddha's methodology shows extraordinary psychological insight. The Buddha explains suffering not by reference to some outside factor, but he traces it to its roots within our own mind, to our ignorance and craving, to greed, hatred, and delusion. And since suffering arises from our own minds, the end of suffering, the cure, also lies within our own mind. By dispelling our mental defilements, our mental obsessions, and gaining clear insight into the nature of reality. To bridge these two points, the beginning point of suffering, the end point of liberation, the Buddha offers a very clear path of practice, the Noble Eightfold Path, which begins with right view of the basic truths about our existence, proceeds through the right intention to undertake the training, then leads into the three ethical factors of right speech, right action, right mindfulness, I'm sorry, right speech, right action, right livelihood, then proceeds to the three factors of mental training, right effort, right mindfulness, and right concentration. When all these eight factors of the path are brought to maturity, then one gains insight into the true nature of existence and attains the goal of wisdom and liberation of the mind. <laughs>